Matthew chapter 19, verse 8. Matthew 19, verse 8. Are we there? Matthew 19, verse 8. He said, And he said unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your heart, suffered you to put away your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. Hallelujah. He said, let me read it again. He said, he said unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your heart, suffered you to put away your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. Amen. The word for this month is going to the beginning. I also want to encourage us by saying that every word we bring out, at least those that are close to me can confirm this, is always a word that we prayed for and God give us to talk about. Hallelujah. We have talked about so many things this year. I'm not sure we've talked about marriage at all. So this month we are focusing on marriage and I want to, you know, soften the blow that it will help us. It's word from God and it will help us in Jesus' name. You know, whenever I want to talk about marriage, I'm usually a bit apprehensive because the last time I did it, um, I received a lot of flashback um, attack, not from the devil, but from members. Praise the Lord. Not from the devil. You know, it's so funny. The women were the ones that first started. Oh, pastor, you are partial. You favor the men. You favor the men. But when it came to the turn of the men, it was another attack on his own. Praise the Lord. Some actually left the church because of what I was preaching. Praise God. And so, I'm saying it ahead. It may look tough. It may look tough. And I have to say the truth. So, but it's for your good. Praise the Lord. But if you have supernatural anointing, you feel it doesn't apply to you, you don't have to take it. But I believe it will help all of us in Jesus' name. So please, if it's not okay by you, you don't need to be angry. It's just that you just don't take it. But I believe you will take it and it will work for you in Jesus' name. Going to the beginning. Hallelujah. Our Lord Jesus Christ was asked a question about divorce. Because during that time, there was school of thought by two big rabbi of that time. From uh, one is called Eliel. And what Eliel was teaching was that you can divorce your wife on any reason. Maybe she cooked, there's too much salt. Hallelujah. You know, some men were divorcing their wife just for that. Because she cooked, there was too much salt in the soup. So you can divorce your wife. So that was what Eliel was preaching. And there's another man called Shammai. That one was saying, no, you can't do that. It is on this, on this, and this. You can do. One of them being uh, adultery, fornication. So they were not asking Jesus. They want to know which side Jesus is. Is he on the side of Eliel or on the side of Shammai? And Jesus told them, about when they were asking about divorce. He said, it is in the beginning. This is not what was there. In the beginning, once somebody was talking recently, not recently, about a year or so ago, when, and that thing is, sometimes comes to my mouth. Instead of beginning, he said, Beningi. Praise the Lord. In case I say Beningi, just forgive me. Praise the Lord. Because as I was about to say beginning, Beningi keep on <laughs> wanting to show up. But the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So he said unto them, he said, Moses, allow it because of the hardness of your heart. Because they asked Jesus, ah, ah, this divorce okay? He said, no. And they now asked him again. They now said, but Moses allowed it. Jesus now said to them that, yeah, Moses allowed it. But the reason why he allowed it is because of the hardness of your heart. But in the beginning... It was not so. Hallelujah. In the beginning, it was not so. I want to say something very quickly to us before I start. Permissive will is not the same thing as perfect will. Amen. Because the perfect will of God will always be the perfect will of God. 
Because when you do what is permissive for you, what the environment uh, permits, that does not still make it the will of God. Because God didn't say anything, or maybe God didn't start talking about it, does not change what God has said. God is his God, and it doesn't change. Amen. There are many things in the Bible that in the beginning, this is what God said, but men decide to go their own way. So, we cannot say because men went their way, that means it's the will of God. Or we want to justify it. It doesn't work that way. Praise God, Lord. It may be permissive. For, for example, there were some things like slavery. It's in the Bible. Do we know that? It's in the Bible. Does that mean God's approve of slavery? No. There are some things in the Bible like a man called Abraham. Somebody was using Abraham as a yastic. Do you know that Abraham lied to a king and God still back him up? Is lying the perfect will of God? No. When Jesus came into the world, it, you didn't see Jesus attacking the Roman government. The, Je the Jewish people, they were under Roman control. In fact, some people attacked Jesus. I never said anything about them. Before then, they don't pay tax. But when the Roman people came, they asked them to pay tax. And the Jewish people know that this tax money they are paying, it will go to their idols. So they didn't want to pay. What did Jesus say? Give to Caesar what is Caesar. Give to God what is God. That's, that does not mean tax paying is the will of God. But Jesus, God he sometimes look at some things about us and find a way to get us to get understanding. Some people will tell you, oh, polygamy is in the Bible. Polygamy is not the will of God. It was man that decided to go polygamous way. And let us look at it. Was it, was it profitable to all of us? Abraham, that had many wives. Are we not suffering the consequences of polygamy? David, that had many wives. Solomon, that had many wives. Did you work for them? Do you know that not only does Solomon have wives, 300 wives, he also, is it 300 wives? Is it three, uh, 700 wives, 300 concubines? So does that mean we should continue doing concubines? Because only people, the part of that place, the Bible will read, is the uh, many polygamy. What about the one of uh, side chicks? May God help us in Jesus' name. So Jesus was telling them, it is not God's will. Divorce is not God's will. It was not in the beginning. And I pray God would. So we need to go to the beginning. Let us say we are going to the beginning. Say we are going to the beginning. Marriage is the foundation of a family. And families are the building blocks of the society. I believe why we are having too many problems now in our society is because there is a problem in the family. If you can solve family problem, you will solve society problem. It's so, it's so unfortunate, like in a place like Sweden, we are yet to realize it, but in some places like United Kingdom, in UK, they are beginning to see it. That problems in the family, if you can fix it, we can fix the community. And specifically, if you can fix men problem, you will fix so many problems. May God help our men in Jesus' name. May God help our men in Jesus' name. Amen. Marriage is also a replica of God's relationship with his church. If you want to know God's relationship with his church and how the church is supposed to relate to God, it is through marriage. The relationship of God with the church is the husband. And what does the husband do? To love the wife. And our Lord Jesus Christ came and showed us example. And the relationship of the wife to the husband, God also showed us that the church is supposed to submit to the wife, to the husband. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. But the Bible told us why. Is because of the hardness of the heart. Now, some people are thinking there's no need to marry anymore. 
Some people feel, don't let us do wedding because it will fail eventually. So to avoid any loss, let us not just, let just be cohabiting. May God deliver such people with such mind in Jesus' name. Um, I've done a, some Bible study, which I'll be doing later, but in a private capacity at some point, before the end of the year, by the grace of God, that you find out that the disadvantages of Sambo, what we call Sambo, cohabiting, is much, much worse than marriage. What you are trying to avoid in, in marriage, you meet worse in cohabiting. And may God help us. One of them is that your future is not certain in cohabiting. At least in marriage, you know that you, you know your destination. But in cohabiting, you, you don't know how that relation, because there's no commitment, nothing binding you together. So anything could happen, and you don't know how that will work for you. May God help us. In the name of Jesus. So God said, it is because of the hardness of your heart. And what is hardness of the heart? I want us to know it is Satan that makes people's heart to be hard so that they cannot hear the word of God. If Satan wants to attack, one of the things he will do, we can write down uh, Zechariah 7.12, is to harden the heart of people, Zechariah 7.12, so that whatever God is saying, we throw it away. Today now, all the things God said in the word of God about marriage is being thrown away. And people are inventing their own thing. That's when some people will begin to tell me, oh, I am from this place. In our culture, this is it. You take it or leave it. But when the problem comes, they don't remember they said that. I, what is, it is, is the idea, is the, it means refusal to listen to the voice of God. And it's connected with hardening of hearts. A heart, okay, let me read this one. A hard heart is where the conscience is seared and insensitive to the Holy Spirit. When the conscience is seared and that conscience is insensitive to the Holy Spirit. So when somebody's heart is hard, there's nothing you can say they will not obey. They will not listen. It will not even get through. They will not feel they are doing wrong. Pharaoh, with all the miracles that Moses did, the Bible told us his heart was hard. And what did he do? He, he continued disobeying until he made destruction. The Israelites on the way to the promised land, God said he endured them for 40 years. And 10 times they defied God. God was doing breaking water. Water was coming for the rock. Manna was coming from heaven. Meat was jumping from heaven. War was being won. You think that will convince them? No, it didn't. When the heart is hardening, there's nothing anybody can do except God helps. And I pray our heart will not be hardened in Jesus' name. That's how Hebrews 7 says, if we hear the voice of the Lord, harden not your heart. Hardening of the heart doesn't just start overnight. It's a process. Little disobedience that builds up to another disobedience. And then at some point, the heart will be hardened. So when we are advising people, you know, I've been to places, you are advising people or counseling people about marriage. This thing is making you to suffer and you still continue doing it. Even though this thing, we can see the consequences of what you are doing. That is not helping you. And we are saying, why don't you try this method? You say, no, pastor, you don't understand. That's a hardened heart. May your heart not be hardened in Jesus' name. Maybe if your marriage is not working the same way it's supposed to be, well, some men would just tell me, oh, my wife is a witch. Ah, that woman, you don't know her. She's a witch. I don't know how she, my, be, witch, aunt me, how did they say it? Huh? Bewitch me to marry her. I don't know. How, she's a witch. Pastor, you don't know. You. I'm the one living with her. And then you see some wives, you say, that man is the junior brother of the devil. Praise the Lord. When you see him in action, all this is praying, lifting hand in church. It's fake. He's devil incarnate. He's so stubborn. 
He doesn't listen. He's, he thinks he's God. Because he's either his way or no way. Hallelujah. When he comes, he crushes everybody, including the wife and the children. The question we are, I think in my heart is, why did you marry the person? Who should we blame? It's you that went and married a monster. Praise the Lord. May God help us in Jesus' name. Like I said, let's, please don't be angry. Praise the Lord. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Hardness of heart will make you to refuse to hear the word of God. And in order to persist it, it will make you to take, to resist it with some actions. Because when the word of God keeps on coming, it may be pricking your conscience. In order to block it, you, the person will even take actions to make sure that that thing, they don't hear it. They can, because of that truth, they can leave that church, go to another church where people will not be talking what they don't want to hear. Because they feel offended the last time you said it. As I'm talking now, if you're offended, maybe it's you I'm talking about. Praise the Lord. The hardening of the heart. May it not be your portion as on today in Jesus' name. In the beginning. Let us say in the beginning. Oh, sorry. In the beginning. Everything God created in the beginning was good. Until Satan came to destroy everything marriage was good there was supposed to be good results everything was good from the beginning i pray god will help us in jesus name in genesis chapter one we can read it genesis chapter one verse one one and two he said in the beginning god created heaven and earth it was good but in verse 2, what happened? Bible says, earth which was our form and void and darkness. In the beginning, there was no void, there was no darkness. It is enemy that brought it. I pray the Lord will deliver us in Jesus' name. In verse 31 of this same chapter, Bible says, when God created everything, what did he say? It was good. Marriage was good, though. Praise the Lord. Marriage is supposed to be good. But the enemy came. And planted whatever he plants. And then he makes it look as if marriage was not good. In John chapter 1. You can see in the beginning. Everything was good. In John chapter 1 verse 1. Bible says in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. The same was with God. The same was with God in the beginning. And all things were made by him. And without him was anything made that was made. But when you jump to verse 10, John chapter 1, he said, he was, that word, he was in the world. And the word was made by him, and the word knew him not. And he came unto his own, and his own received it not. The word was in the beginning. But when the word came to his own, number one, Bible said the word, his own, didn't recognize him. And then the word, his own, they refused him. May we not refuse God in Jesus' name. In the beginning, it's good. God made everything good in the beginning. Marriage is very good. Marriage is good. And God has a good plan for marriage. There's so many fantastic things that God designed for marriage. In Ecclesiastes 7.29. Ecclesiastes 7.29. He said, Lo, this is uh, one of the, the wisest men we are told in the world. Lo, this only have I found, that God has made every man upright, but they have sought out many inventions. Everything was good, but man decided to go his own way, to, the, the, to go and invent his own way. I want to announce to us, marriage was not in the, uh, divorce was not in the beginning. Mark 10, 5 to 7, Mark chapter 10, 5 to 7, it was not in the beginning. It was due to hardness of heart. If you read that Mark 10, 5 to 7, in our spare time, it, in the beginning, it was male and female that get into marriage. Nothing else was, it's male and female. But today now, we are coming up with all manners of stuff. We are coming up with all manners of stuff. 
In the beginning, it was just male and female that come together and become one. In the beginning, in the beginning, Bible told us a man will leave his father and his mother and be what? And be joined to his wife. But today now we see something else. You see a man is still holding us to his mother. And they will not say you go and join to somebody. Three cannot join. It's only two that can join. You are married, but you are still your, there's still your apron, is still, unbiblical cord is still with your mom. When you say join, you join and become one. You glue together. That's what it was in the beginning. Praise the Lord. But people have reserve plan now. We have what they call prenuptial now. In case it doesn't work. Some people have some sisters or mommies that are still teleguiding from somewhere. Before you do anything in your family, you must still first talk to your mommy. Maybe you marry a rich, uh, you are from a rich family. You marry somebody. Your parents have, when they are built, giving you house, they give you car. Don't get deceived by it. Oh. Because when there's divorce, they've already done some legal things that the man will, or the, whoever the one that owns the house will just take the house and you go with nothing. That's not in the beginning. Praise the Lord. I've seen people, even Christian. Who, who, who is the, they say your mother, your sister, and your wife. Who will you hold first? Do we need to debate that one? Somebody you are glued with. Somebody you are one with. Is that not the first person you should know? He said, my mother. That means you have never grown. It cannot be, how can you be your child? Without your wife, can you have a child? Some people, they are married to their child. May God deliver us. In Jesus' name. I think that is common with sisters. They are glued with their child. They love their child more than they love their husband. May God deliver our sisters in Jesus' name. Like I said, take it easy. Polygamy is not in the beginning. Divorce is not in the beginning. What was in the beginning? We can see it. I will give us the scripture. Genesis 21, 2, 21. In the beginning. Let us say in the beginning. Gen sorry, not 21 as a matter of fact. It's 24. 24. He said, therefore, Genesis 2, 24. He said, therefore, shall a man leave his father and his mother and cleave to his wife, unto his wife. And they shall be one flesh. Is that not what is in the beginning? He said, a man shall leave. You will disconnect from your parents. And be joined to your wife. Not to your parents again. That was in the beginning. That was in Genesis. And then when Jesus was asked in Matthew 19. Matthew 19, 4 to 6. Jesus was asked. Our Lord Jesus Christ was asked. He now told them in verse 4. And he answered. Matthew 19, 4 to 6. He said, and he answered and said unto them, have you not read? That that which made them in the beginning make them male and female. And in verse 5, he said, And for this cause shall a man leave his father. You is repeating the same thing again. So it's repeating that a man must leave his father and his mother and be joined. Some people say uh, they said it means glued. You glue together. So how can you be glued to somebody and still be saying that person is the most important person in your life? Some people told us. They said, oh, uh, in the Old Testament, it's only bishop that, can, that should be monogamous. How can you become, you must first be a member before you become bishop, isn't it? Or is there anybody that is a born bishop? So if all of us are married, allowed to do polygamy, so that means we will not have bishops again. So you must have been a member before they qualify you to become a bishop. So if you have been doing polygamy as a member, so that means there will be no bishop. But this is what Paul said, though. There's a reason why Paul said that one though, about, about um, uh, who should be a bishop. But this is what Paul said. Uh, what's it called? Ephesians 5. Verse 31, 30 to, but we can read 31. Okay, 
30 and 31. He said, for uh, Ephesians 5, 30. This is what Paul said to everybody. He said, for we are members of his body and of his flesh and of his bone. He said, for this cause again, a man shall leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife. And the two shall be one flesh. This is a mystery. Can we see what is in the beginning? That is the beginning of marriage. A man shall leave. Because they know the man is the head of the house. So they are telling the head of the house, you break off all attachment and go and be joined to that woman. Oh, but you don't know what to, that woman will become. That is now, you now leave that. You bring, that's why you have to channel it through God. So that God can help you. And I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. God will help us in Jesus' name. There's a complaint. Two. Ah, I don't have much time. Two complaints about some years ago, God brought it to my mind. About some sisters, two sisters from Jesus' connection, so not from another connection. They said, our men were very wicked. And when that person was saying it, she was not just saying it as, oh, all the men. He's also putting me into that group too. So he didn't say it about, so that anybody that wants to be angry, he's also said it to me. But he was being respectful by saying, you men. In fact, that's the way she said it. That it's better to marry a non-believing Swedish person than to marry a Christian brother. Two people. I said, why? What would he do? He said, at least, you know, if you marry a Swedish man, they help you with babies. They help you to push bomb van. They help you to change papas. They help you to do us work. But our Christian brothers, what did they do? I am the head of the house. Bible says you should submit. I'm not going to help you with any baby. I'm not going to help you clean any house. I am the head. You do it. That's a woman's work. A woman's place is in the kitchen. Am I right or wrong? No sister talk anything now. Okay, praise the Lord. I was told. And I checked with some people. Since people are quiet, I will have mentioned the name. I won't mention, but I will have mentioned who I check with. And they now say, ah, pastor, it's just two. They are more than two, praise the Lord. Because they, they are not telling you, that's why you, <laughs> you don't know. that They are more than two that thinks the way those people think. And that thing has been going on with me. But now we can address it today. Praise the Lord. Bible says women should submit to the husband. But Bible didn't say women should obey the husband. It's in the Bible. I'm not, that does not mean I'm saying women should not obey. But what Bible say to women is submit. It didn't say obey. And there's a difference between submit and obey. Obey is by force. Submit is a choice. The difference between an elected president and a dictator is what do you know what it is? It's authority. The elected president was voted and given the authority to lead. But a dictator didn't have authority. So he has to use force to, to, to get that authority. He knows he cannot tell people, obey me, obey me. People, because they didn't, they didn't approve of him. So he has to use force to make people to obey. So when Bible says, why submit, it does not mean, don't misinterpret it to mean obey. It seems as if some men see it that way. The job of the man is, in Ephesians 5.25, it says, husband, love your wife. Love. Ephesians 5.25. It's a love. And what is the example that we can give? The Bible says, as Christ loved the church. Is that not? And how did Christ love the church? Let me show us. Give us my time is up. Number one, he, the people he loved, he washed their feet. We can check John 13. He washed the feet of the people he loved. Number two, he, he was called names. He was stoned. He was rejected. Eventually, he was killed by the people he loved. And he still loved them. He didn't say, you must submit before I love you. He loved them despite the fact that they hated him. He said, like Christ, love the church. 
Oh, the reason why I don't love her is because it's not for me. That means you don't, in the beginning, you have missed the beginning. Praise the Lord. He was killed by the people. Bible say, uh, Romans 5.8. Bible say, God demonstrated his love. Romans 5.8. That while we are yet sinners, God Christ died for the sinners. He showed his love. When the wife was not submitting, when the wife was rebellious, when the wife was too foolish, Bible say he died to prove his love. Is that what we do now today? He say, if she can submit, I will love. That's not what Bible says. That's not what is in the beginning. Praise the Lord. And the reason why some people have problem doing this is because their heart is hardened. You know, when one don't have fear of God, it's almost difficult. It's impossible, almost very difficult to obey God's word. Only people that has the fear of God that can obey God. And may God help us in Jesus' name. I said, may the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Love. Love. Jesus Christ demonstrated for us that love begats submission. When you love, the wife will submit. Not the other way around. You are the head. Show love. Our Lord Jesus Christ loved us to get us to submit to him. He didn't force us. So I don't know where we get some scriptures. We see some one apostle. He said, oh, you beat your wife. You, it's your wife's fault. If she says something to you. I know she says something. But you can win her. Somebody told me some years ago. He said, it's possible to get honey with vinegar. Sorry, with, uh, to get a bee with honey than with vinegar. I went there that day. I wanted to get my daughter into the doggies. And I was arguing with them. After all my argument and threatening and everything, the lady was just looking for me, looking at me, and the answer was still no. Praise the Lord. <laughs> then I decided to calm down. You know, in my, days, in my place, they would say, calm down, small, small. And I calmed down, small, small. And I started talking. So the lady didn't say, hey, so you know this. He said, it's easier to catch a bee with honey than with armor. You know, it was actually armor he used for me. I said, explain. He said, when you take sledgehammer, you will just be wasting energy and time. But with only, with what you are doing now, yes. And that's when they now accepted our form. And my daughter got that admission. Praise the Lord. Love begats submission. Love gives birth. Our Lord Jesus Christ demonstrated it. He demonstrated it. And God will help us in Jesus' name. I said, God will help us in Jesus' name. Ephesians 5.21 The fear of God and submission of God is determine how much you love. If you really love God, if you really have the fear of God in you, the Bible says submitting yourself to one another in fear of God. Stop saying my wife don't submit. Help to change pampas. Praise the Lord. He said, what about you? I changed pampas when my children were small. I carried them on my back. I pushed bomb van. Hallelujah. Am I right, man? Uh, if I'm not, you know, when pastor is saying, you can just, uh, <laughs> a member will see. I did. I, and I, there's nothing shameful about it. You help your wife. I cook. And I still cook. Not regularly, but I cook. Praise the Lord. Whether they like it is another thing, but at least I cook. At least idea is what they say is needed. Amen. Uh -huh. He said she's sweet. Praise the Lord. I, I think so. I thought some people would clap for me. <laughs> I cook. I cook. Not all the time. That one, maybe you can fault me on that. But I cook. I do things in the house. I wash toilet too. Praise the Lord. And I wash plates sometimes too. No, the reason why I don't wash plates often is because we have children. And I expect them to be washing plates. But even though they are telling me they have rights. But God will help us in Jesus' name. Ah! Sisters have escaped today. Praise the Lord. Because I have for sisters too. There is complaint from brothers. But I can't talk about that one today. Because brothers too. I, then my time is up. So I have to just say what the brothers said. Maybe the Holy Spirit will tell us what we sisters should do. They said, you sisters. 
you don't respect them anymore. You, it's like you are in Europe. You have now, when you are marrying them, you are very submissive. You even call them daddy. But now, you have become something else. Praise the Lord. You are now saying, I have your rights, you have my rights. If there's anything you want to use to get a man to stay with you and not cheat on you and to love you, is to respect him. To anybody around any sister, say, did you hear that? You respect him. Did you tell them? Or you're afraid to tell them? It's only me that should be saying it. <laughs> eh? Did you tell them? Respect. So to submit means to respect your husband. Respect is leadership. Because men are driven by ego. They are driven by ego. And when you disregard that ego, that man, no matter how pretty you are, it's a matter of time she will leave you for another person. He may not leave you because of the fear of God. Praise the Lord. But he's not going to be happy with you. If there's a way to get a man, is to respect him. To boost his ego. When you do little things, make it look like he's so big. Ah, you cook for us. Oh, my children. Your, dad, your daddy has cooked for us. Oh, we are having feast today. Hallelujah. <laughs> Men are ego driven. You know, women are relationship driven. So you need to understand how to get the man. I've talked about man now. So women, sisters, support me on this one now. Praise the Lord. Submit. If, you know, if you say, oh, that man, you don't know him. He's not smart. Why did you marry him? Well, you know you can't submit to him. There is a role. There is some anointing that goes with being a father. I, I'm telling you all the truth. There, is some, there are some functions a father will play in the life of a child, in the life of the wife, that nobody else can bring. And that's the way God created men. And I pray sisters will get that in Jesus' name. You must respect your husband. Don't feminist. I'm not saying you should not. I'm a support of equal rights. I am totally in support. But when it comes to your husband, you must respect his leadership. Yeah, you may disagree. Like I said, submit. I didn't say obey. You may disagree with him on some things, but you still have to do it respectfully. This thing that you want us to do, I'm not going to do it, or I don't agree with it, but you must do it with respect. But when you begin to challenge him, begin to point out his mistake, even though he's not as smart as you, you now point, make it obvious that he's not smart. Ah, the only person you are doing is yourself. Go and, go and ask from slay queens. Go and ask from uh, side chicks. Learn from them. Praise the Lord. Those things you are making guess of, that is what the weapon they use to steal husband. When you are putting the man on the spot all the time, side chicks will work on him in the house. He will not even talk about those faults in his life. So please, let us help our brothers. Amen. And God will help us in Jesus' name. My time is up. My time is up. I have things, so I'm just ignoring it for brothers, for sisters. Sisters, I think you should like me today. He said, thank you. <laughs> Next time. Okay, praise the Lord. Can we rise up on our feet? We're going to be looking at family in depth. Next time, we're going to be talking, think, talking about five things a wise man wants in a woman. And the next time, maybe we'll talk about five things a woman needs from a man. Hallelujah. The beginning. Let us say the beginning. Can we say, Father, we thank you for what you did in the beginning. We accept your will. We accept your will. We accept your will. You accept your counsel. That what you have done said is what we will do. And every hardness of heart that is making us to find it difficult to obey what you instructed in the beginning. Father, we ask for mercy today that you wash it off by your blood. Lord, let our marriage begin to get results. The beginning thought of God, let it begin to happen in our homes. We thank you, Father. We bless your holy name. Can we just thank God for our marriage? If you are married, just thank God for your marriage. God has a good plan for you. Can you just thank God? And if you are not married, thank God that you are going to be married. Let's thank him. We bless his.